This is Mike with AskTractorMike.com, and this is a kind of a culmination of a couple of months of preparation in talking about three different types of cutters. We have a rotary cutter, a finish mower, and a flail mower that we're going to compare the cut in the field. And today I'm speaking with jo Josh Trollinger, and Josh, your National Accounts Manager for Rhino Ag. Is that the right title? Uh, large Accounts Sales Manager for Rhino Ag, yes sir. And, and Rhino Ag, uh, I, and I would have never guessed when I started this channel that I was going to get more people wanting to know about flail mowers. What do you think about flail mowers? That's my number one asked question. And I, I got asked it on Facebook the other day, uh, like two months ago, and I thought I'm just going to pick up the phone. And Rhino was the first company I called. Could could we evaluate a flail mower? And you guys you guys work with me, and I appreciate that. And we're going to talk today about flail mowers. I have zero experience with them. And I know a lot of people want to know about them and want to know what the calling card is and what the advantages are. You've had some experience. What's the big deal about a flail mower? Well, the difference in a flail mower versus a rotary or a finish mower is how it cuts the grass, how it maintains the debris. And there's a lot of uses that the flail mower sees that the rest don't. Um, flail mowers in the Midwest aren't as prevalent. Everybody's used to a rotary cutter, but when you go to the eastern or the western seaboard, you start to get a lot more orchards, pecans, fruits, nuts, all kinds of different areas, and that's where the flail mower shines. I grew up on an apple orchard, and we talked about flail mowers as a method. When, when, every year you prune uh, grapevines, apples, whatever, and you have this these limbs, small limbs. With a flail mower, and, and we never owned one, we, we always moved the brush to the end of the field and burned it, but with a flail mower, you just grind it up. That's correct. That's the great thing is because the way this drum is designed, the way the knives are more, um, the best way to describe it is if you think of a rotary tiller. A rotary tiller is bringing debris in, it's chopping it up, and it's keeping it contained in the drum, whereas in a finished mower or rotary cutter, it's sucking debris up, it's turning it in circles while it's cutting it, and it doesn't keep it as fine because you've got two blades, two cutting edges that are designed to maintain that debris, where in a flail mower you've got anywhere from 30 pairs of knives to 120 pairs of knives. So you're able to take the small debris that you're talking, the prunings, the grass, the um, what's left on the ground after the season's over or even during the season, and you can put it into a fine mixture and it will actually help break that down quicker so that you leave a nice manicured area to, to the orchard or even to the uh, grass yard. So, so a, a, a person that wants a, a manicured look, and you mentioned that golf courses use these too. If, if you want a real manicured look and you, and you want the, you know, I guess what type of grass you had would come into play if you needed it broken up more to decompose, that's when you look for a flail mower? It is. When you think about a golf course and you, you picture the big pretty fairways that are nice and striped, the difference is they're very well manicured. It's a very smooth surface and the flail allows you to get down almost to a quarter of an inch, whereas in most finish mowers and rotary cutters, you're looking at three quarters to a one inch cut that's left. So you're not able to take it as low in the central Midwest where we have a lot of rocks, we have a lot of hills, the ground's not really that flat. The flail will still do good because you can still keep it up two, three inches off the ground. And because that drum is rolling over, you can bypass that uh, piece that's in the way. Whereas when you take it to a golf course, or you take it to parks and recs, or very well manicured areas, you can set it to the ground and literally keep it mowed down to a quarter of an inch and, and it will chop up the debris so fine that it breaks down and it dissipates quicker than what you will when you leave from a rotary cutter even a fence. Safety is another aspect of a flail mower that's, that's uh, uh, an advantage. Uh, the great part about the safety with the flail mower is because it's self-contained in a drum and it's a rolling action versus a whipping action like you have on a rotary cutter, uh, you don't have the chance of throwing debris as much with a flail mower as you do with some of your rotaries or your spin type mowers. What about cost and maintenance? Um, they're roughly going to be maybe a little more to maintain because you don't have two blades that are self-sharpening or that you can resharpen and continue. Um, you actually have knives or hammers as we call them. Um, and there's, like I said, anywhere from 20 some knives or hammers to 118, 120, depending on the width of the machine. So when you go to replace one knife, you have to replace both. These are a balanced unit. So to keep them in balance, you have to replace everything in pairs. They're designed built in pairs. They have to be replaced in pairs. So 
your maintenance um, will in turn probably be a little bit more or a little more that you got to pay attention to it more than you do a rotary cutter um, but the cost ratios are probably about the same and, and as far as the cost of the initial machine I know they're more money than like a rotary cutter or finish more yeah they are there I'm gonna guess on average they're about 20 to 25 percent more expensive than what you're gonna spend on one of those but they're also a very uh, specific unit I mean guys that are purchasing these are willing or needing that um, the cost really isn't that big of a deal as much as it is when you start looking into the different types of rotary cutters because they have a specific use and for that use they're expecting the cost because of what they're maintaining now one thing if I owned this machine what I would like to do with it I have a woods with small brush and and uh, like buck brush, um, you know, I don't know all the plants, but if I was wanting to cut wildlife trails through the woods, this is more of a fin a finished grade mower. So uh, tell us the difference in the two machines uh, when, when you're buying. If you're if you're if you're mowing grass, you you get one machine. If you're mowing woods, different machine. So they come in two different variations. You can get a fine cut or a coarse cut. The difference is going to be the spacing on the knives and the amount of knives for a fine cut is typically about three to one compared to a coarse cut. So where you may have in a uh, in this six footer, you may have 30 pairs of knives that are fine cut. You'll have about half to a third of that when you get into the coarse cut. And the reason for it is you gotta move more material through it. And you're typically in a coarse cut moving bigger material through that than you are the fine cut. The fine cut is, is really designed for a grass application like a parks, like a, uh, golf course. They're also great though for people that have large yards, five acre yards. You can keep them manicured and you don't have to worry about the safety of throwing debris around houses and, and buildings and such like you will with a rotary cutter. However, when you want to go clear a trail and you want to get into the woods, um, you still have up to a two inch cut capacity on the smaller ones, uh, or what I call the mid-range, five and six footers, When you even up to seven. When you get smaller, than a five footer or you get larger then you kind of lose your capacity and you go into more of a coarse cut. Therefore you can go out and maintain uh, if you've got small buck brush and it's an inch to two inches the coarse cut will do fine even in some of the fine cut applications as long as you're not you know if it's two or three foot tall oh, uh, you can probably pretty. get through it okay if it's larger than that you really need to go to the uh, coarse cut hammer than the fine cut. We are going to get in the field here shortly and in the next video, we're going to compare uh, a rotary cutter, brush hog, a finish mower, and the, and the flail. And I, I'm really looking forward to this to finally actually get seat time running a flail mower and just to see what the big deal is. And, and I know those of you that have flail mowers, they, they love them. They do. And, uh, and uh, I've heard a lot of people say that that's all they would own. And from a safety aspect, I get that. And, and maybe from a cut aspect, we're going to find out. So uh, appreciate you watching my videos. I'd be honored if you'd subscribe to my YouTube channel and like my Facebook page. And if you have questions or comments, put them below. We'll try to answer them. Thanks for watching.